Ryan Reynolds here from Mint Mobile. With the price of just about everything going up during inflation, we thought we'd bring our prices down. So to help us, we brought in a reverse auctioneer, which is apparently a thing. Mint Mobile Unlimited Premium Wireless. Ready to get 30, 30, ready to get 30, ready to get 20, 20, 20, ready to get 20, 20, ready to get 15, 15, 15, 15, just 15 bucks a month. So give it a try at mintmobile.com slash switch. $45 up front for three months plus taxes and fees. Promote for new customers for limited time. Unlimited more than 40 gigabytes per month. Slows. Full terms at mintmobile.com. This episode is brought to you by La Quinta by Window. Your work can take you all over the place, like Texas. You've never been, but it's going to be great because you're staying at La Quinta by Wyndham. Their free bright side breakfast will give you energy for the day ahead. And after, you can unwind using their free high-speed Wi-Fi. Tonight, La Quinta. Tomorrow, you shine. Book your stay today at LQ.com. This is Optimal Living Daily, episode 3258, Long-Term Thinking, by Colin Wright of ExileLifestyle.com. And I'm Justin Mollick, your very own personal narrator. I read the best blogs that I can get permission from to you covering productivity, minimalism, personal development, self-help, all that fun stuff. And with that, let's get right to another post and start optimizing your life. Long-Term Thinking by Colin Wright of ExileLifestyle.com. There's an organization called the Long Now Foundation that focuses on planting seeds for long-term thinking. Their most well-known project is a 10,000-year clock, which is a mechanical clock conceived back in 1986, a full-scale version of which is being built on private land in Texas at a cost of about $42 million, leading up to the final version, which will be built in rural Nevada. The clock will tick exactly once per year for 10,000 years. The difficulty of building something mechanical meant to last that long and to operate with the requisite precision is immense. Hence the cost and the amount of time it's taken to get to where the project is now and the time left before the publicly accessible final version in Nevada will be completed. But the project is considered to be worthwhile because of what it represents rather than the service it provides. A physical, mechanical clock of immense accuracy isn't terribly valuable in a world filled with atomic clock-calibrated smartphones and other devices, all of which provide the same service for free. A complex device that requires the most clever and precise construction currently feasible, built in such a way that will survive for thousands of years, though? That's not something we've done before, which is strange when you think about it. I suspect many of us would like to assume that the human species will still be around in 10,000 years, though we'll hopefully be way better off and almost certainly changed in some fundamental ways. I personally like to imagine that we will have moved beyond scarcity at that point and will be spread around the galaxy, living well and doing interesting, beneficent things because we can. But our planning, our building, the things we make and do, operate within the confines of a far more finite time frame. Long-lasting contemporary buildings are designed to last around 50 years or 100 years at the extremes. Our digital storage systems, where much of our modern artwork, research, and documentation lives, is predicated on hard drives that typically last somewhere between two and five years. Even high-quality, old-school methods of storing knowledge, like archival paper-based books, generally only last 40 to 100 years on the high end unless dramatic preservation actions are taken, which isn't something we can typically do on scale. None of this implies that we don't care about the future, but we do seem to be prone to short-term thinking, even though humans seem to be unique amongst the life forms we know about in that we're able to plan ahead. Some animals can instinctually stockpile acorns for the winter, or figure out how to move a box, stand on it, and grab out-of-reach bananas. But humans seem to be the only creatures on Earth cognitively capable of thinking about what might happen a year from now, or 10 years, or 10,000 years. We have that capability, but we tend not to use it very often because day-to-day concerns have priority, and moment-to-moment concerns even more so. This makes sense. A focus on immediate threats and opportunities has obvious survival benefits, and it's arguably more important to worry about the poisonous snake at your feet rather than fixating on the problems your 
grandchildren's grandchildren's grandchildren might face someday in some vague, far-off, not immediately applicable future. But it's important to maintain a sense of chronological place, I think, lest we find ourselves endlessly responding to disasters that arise seemingly out of nowhere, failing to benefit from the wisdom and knowledge gained from the last close-matched disaster our species survived. The power of recording information and thinking long-term is that we can inoculate ourselves against some types of mistakes that we would otherwise make over and over again due to our default tendencies and the patterns that emerge from humans engaging with each other on scale. This is true, notably, not just with large-scale events across vast timeframes, like recalling how to defuse an impending international conflict or how to stave off a potential pandemic, but also on a personal level, like remembering which politicians and businesses behaved in a socially positive, moral manner during a disease-related lockdown and which grabbed for power at the public's expense. It's unintuitive to take note of such things in a manner that benefits our future selves and societies for the same reason the building of a 10,000-year clock is unintuitive. It's not useful to us right now and doesn't help us solve the great many important problems we currently face. So we fail to take proper notes and make suitable plans, we don't imagine possible distant futures, and we choose to focus instead on the endless procession of new, shocking, frightening snakes at our feet, forever blind to other, larger-scale concerns. Maintaining a sense of self-place within broader swaths of time, in addition to helping us think beyond what's right in front of us, can also imbue in us a sort of overview effect where that larger context provides us with resources from the past, incentivizes us to produce and share resources with the future, and helps us consider where things are going across eons, rather than limiting our time horizon to today, the next major disaster, or the end of our personal time as living, thinking beings. You just listened to the post titled, Long-Term Thinking by Colin Wright of ExileLifestyle.com, and I'll be right back with my commentary. How do you feel great on vacation? Like, really good? Easy. You go to Aruba. You'll spend your time relaxing on cool white sand beaches and floating in healing blue water. You'll immerse yourself in natural wonder and find your center on an island where things move at your speed. You won't just feel great, you'll feel relaxed, renewed, and ready for life. That's the Aruba Effect. Plan your trip at aruba.com. Whoa, landing an account this big will totally change my landscaping business. It's going to mean hiring more guys and more equipment and new trucks for the new guys to drive the new equipment in. I don't know if I'm ready. You can do this. And Ford Pro Fence Simple can help. Our experts are ready to make growing pains less painful for your business with flexible financing solutions that meet the needs of your business today when you need them. Get started at fordpro.com slash financing. Thank you to Colin. Definitely a more rare kind of post for this show. I'm pretty sure we've never covered this before. And I appreciate the reminder. We hear a lot about the need for recycling, different forms of power, composting, but in our day-to-day lives, it's so easy to focus on the now. And it's funny to me because the basic principle of a practice you hear about on this show a lot, meditation, also a practice that I've spent lots of time on, the basic principle of it is being in the moment, living in the now. In fact, I've probably narrated a handful of articles on this show that talk about the power of now. I believe that's actually the title of a very popular book, The Power of Now. But being in the now or practicing meditation for a few minutes a day, and probably the book Power of Now, is not disregarding the importance of planning and protecting our future. In fact, you could argue the opposite. The practice of trying to be very present in the moment is actually a practice of compassion and letting things go. And from compassion comes topics like sustainability. If you're wondering how you can be both present but planning for the future at the same time, it's quite simple, really. You're fully aware and in the moment of planning for the future. Sounds a little weird, but I'm sure you can imagine being in the flow state, like completely absorbed with what you're doing, 
when you're doing something really adventurous like surfing or skiing, well, that kind of flow state can easily be applied to other things in life, like conversations, your work, and of course, planning for the future or thinking about things like sustainability. So that's slightly off topic from what Colin was saying in this article, but interestingly enough, and completely by coincidence, I'm going to be sharing an article about mindfulness and meditation tomorrow. So have a great rest of your day, and I'll see you tomorrow where your optimal life awaits.